Welcome to the peak performance video for the NT600, six horsepower equivalent electric outboard. This electric outboard is packed to the gills with features, both smart features built into the tiller handle and in the hardware of the motor itself. There's a few things that I like to dial in for peak performance on the water. The single most important adjustment feature in the motor's performance is this trim bar. So on most John boats with an angled transom like this, I like to be on either the second or third hole. Even a vertical transom is gonna perform best with the trim bar at the second hole. So very rarely are you gonna have a circumstance where you're gonna achieve peak performance on the lowest trim bar setting, but it's there if you need it. Take note of how your motor's performing on the water. If you feel the prop catching any air and ventilating at all, you'll want to look at trim first and cavitation plate placement second. Those are gonna be the two things that'll get you a really clean, smooth wake and eliminate ventilation around the prop. One really important feature to dial in the performance of the motor is the cavitation plate. Ideal placement of the cavitation plate ensures that your prop gets clean water and can get full power at any speed throughout the throttle range. Ideal placement of the cavitation plate is about one inch below the edge of your hole, where your 90 degree bend at the back of the transom meets the motor shaft. You'll wanna go down just about an inch from there and that should be the ideal placement of the cavitation plate. It should be just under the water. From here, peak performance has a lot to do with the digital screen settings. To access the menu, I'm gonna put the motor in park. I'm gonna double click the menu button and that gets me into these menu options. I've got the time zone set where I want it, but I'm gonna cycle down to speed, max power. So this can allow you to really maximize the range. If you had the max power set at 2000 watts, for example, full throttle wouldn't be consuming as much power as it would be on full power mode, which is 3000 watts. The max power setting is a really good thing to manipulate. If you have the 600 on a little bit of a smaller, lighter boat, or you have a less experienced user in front of the throttle. Throttle sensitivity is where you can really start to tailor the motor to the watercraft. So for example, if I'm running a very light watercraft like an inflatable skiff, say the NS130, I'm gonna dial this all the way down to one or two. This is gonna give me a little slower ramp up in the throttle range. So less thrust on the low end of the throttle. And the reason that you want this sensitivity setting to be so is that it won't surprise you if you're operating a really light boat. If I was powering you know, a larger boat, say a pontoon boat, a, a large skiff or a barge or something like that, I'm gonna go ahead and crank the throttle sensitivity all the way up to a nine. That's gonna give me a lot of thrust at the low end of the throttle range. Most of the boats I'm operating are, are pretty light and nimble. I'm gonna set it to a four. That's where I like it. I'm gonna exit the menu and then I'm gonna go back in and we're gonna take a look at SOC Low Protect. With this setting turned on, you'll get that diminished power at 20%. So once the smart tiller detects that your state of charge in your battery has reached 20% or less, it'll dial that power consumption down automatically for you. You don't have to tailor necessarily how you use the tiller handle and the throttle. It's just kind of a built-in mechanism to ensure that you can get back to the ramp. One less obvious thing to do to ensure that your motor maintains peak performance over time is 
servicing the terminals and the exposed metal parts with a dielectric grease. The other thing too is that if you're not using a low pro lithium 48 volt battery and the communication cable is making sure that the waterproof cap is over the plug of the communication cable that's pre-installed on the motor. So for the dielectric grease application, I like to apply a little dab of grease or a spritz with an aerosol dielectric grease right to the metal parts of, of these plugs, both the communication cable and the SB120 connector. For starters, I like to know all the different pieces of hardware or tools that I will potentially need to adjust settings on the motor. You'll want a five millimeter Allen key, a six millimeter Allen key, and a three quarter inch socket wrench for servicing the prop, which I like to do after every voyage on the water. I'll pull the prop off after I'm off the water and I've got everything cleaned up just to remove any vegetation or debris that might be around the prop shaft. When I'm done on the water, especially in a saltwater setting, I like to make sure that I spray down the motor and its components with a freshwater mist, completely dry everything, and then reapply dielectric grease or anti-corrosive spray if needed. That'll keep your NT600 functioning at peak performance for a long time to come. Thank you for watching the peak performance video on the NT600 six horsepower electric outboard motor. I hope this video helped you dial in the best performance for your watercraft. This motor is feature packed and it might take you a couple outings to really achieve peak performance, but now you know your way around the motor, have fun out there, and remember the way forward is electric.